Hi there, Sam here, and welcome to the last video in the Creating Your Project series. In this video, we'll run through how you can kick off a site crawl for your project. To get started, I need to head over to the Content360 module. This part of the platform is designed to analyse and give insights into the technical performance of content pages. Please refer to the Content360 Basics video next to see what data and metrics are available through this module. For now, let's focus on how to configure a crawl. As you can see, I am once again using the Boohoo project here, and I have not yet crawled this domain. So if I select OK, it will bring up this pop-out to help me set up the crawl. Starting off with crawl name, I'm going to call this one Kickoff Crawl, as this is my first for this site. When running crawls in the future, try to be as descriptive as possible, using the date, path and options chosen for the crawl. This is because all crawl data is stored, and this helps you to pick up the relevant data from a list. Crawl Start page specifies where I'd like the crawl to begin, and only pages connected to this page will be picked up. Moving on to Crawl Path, this option limits the crawl to a specific part of the site. Any links to parts of the site outside the crawl path will be ignored and treated as external links. Ignored Paths works in the opposite way to Crawl Path. Any paths that I enter here will be excluded from my crawl, and I can list as many as needed. I need to make sure that the Crawl Start page is inside any crawl path, and not any ignored paths, otherwise my crawl would fail. The ignored parameters option lets me exclude specific label parameters that may form part of a URL. This could include items such as item ID, UTM medium or UTM source. Our crawler will then ignore these parameters when deciding if it has already crawled a page. This stops us from crawling the same thing multiple times. The user agent allows me to choose between Google Web Crawler for regular search results or Google Mobile Smartphone to see data from the perspective of mobile phones. And then we have a series of checkboxes. Some of these are switched on by default, which represents our recommended settings for a crawl, but of course I can toggle these as needed. To give a quick rundown of the options here, I have only crawl www site. So if I have other subdomains, this will only crawl my www.domain. Start crawling HTTPS, as the name suggests, I can start the crawl from the HTTPS protocol if my pages are primarily in this format. Obey robots.txt and ignore excluded files and folders. This ignores any pages specified within the site's robots.txt file. Obey nofollow attributes. This will treat any links with a nofollow attribute as a dead end. Check external links. This checks the integrity of any links pointing outside of the site or the part of the site being crawled. And lastly, check images. This makes sure that images are not missing and collects alt text and image size data. The second to last setting is string to detect on each page. I can provide a specific URL format string here and then the crawler will check if it appears on each page. This can be really useful for identifying pages with missing tracking codes and the like. All that's left is the maximum number of pages. A fraud test can crawl up to 20,000 pages at a time and there is no limit to the amount of crawling you can do as we do not charge for crawls. With my options set, I can hit save to initiate the crawl and I can expect my data to be returned shortly depending on the parameters that I chose and the size of my domain. Now that this is running, I can go ahead and set up parallel crawls for my competitors. As you can see, I have four competitors for Boohoo and I could create crawls for these domains in the same way that I just did for my site. Competitor data is great for comparing site structure, content, social shares and much more, gaining insight to inform my own strategy. The last point to cover is how to automate crawls. If I jump over to the settings part of the platform, I can find crawl schedules. There are no schedules right now, but I can add one easily by clicking new schedule, which gives me this pop out. Here I can select the sites I want to crawl and how often. For this example, I'll select my domain and all of my competitors and schedule the crawl for the first of every month. With that done, I click settings and I can now see the same options as those we were just looking at over on Content360. The only difference here is that these settings will be applied to all of the domains that I selected on the Schedule tab. Our recommendation is to schedule a standard crawl every month for you and your competitors, where you look at as much as possible. Then just run any ad hoc crawls as required, using any combination of options we have explored in this video. And that's it. This is the last video in this series, and if you have been following along, your project is now up and running effectively. Be sure to check out our other video series, which explore the Authoritas modules in more detail. To learn more or to ask any questions, feel free to reach out using the details provided at the end of this video. See you!